Marcus Allen here. Happy to have you here. You brought a championship back to New Orleans. We appreciate you and all your teammates, sure. Coach Lawton. We love to see it. But I do want to start there because all the articles I saw, even some social media outlets, they talked about how you came back to New Orleans to win a championship and you obviously got it done. But can we go back to the decision to leave AZ Compass and come back to New Orleans? You know, it, it took a lot, you know, to leave AZ Compass because I put a lot of, you know, time and, you know, moving away from home. Those are my, like, family members at that time. But, you know, the decision came with a lot of, like, reasons, you know, coach leaving, uh, players leaving, most of the juniors were leaving. So that was, like, the core group coming back next year. And, you know, I just felt like it was, you know, I, I learned what I needed to learn throughout, you know, being away from home and just being, you know, playing in that prep level. So I feel like it was just time to, you know, come home and just, you know, put my leadership skills, you know, on point. Yeah. So fast forward a year later, you got the chip. You had yeah. a great season. How does it feel when you look back? It's a, it's, it's a blessing, you know, all the, you know, hard work, all the praying is just surreal, honestly, you know. That moment when we was getting up to Lakeland, you know, it was just like, wow, I'm actually here. Like, now let's actually finish the job. Especially to do it with Coach Law and winning his seventh one. I mean, that was big time. Yeah. Okay, now that we're here, we got to talk about Coach Law. And he's yeah. iconic, been there forever, been doing it forever. And he loves to say on, on Facebook that bike life is not for everyone. <laughs> he, that's his thing. And I just be like, yeah, Coach, yeah, Coach. Yeah. Well, like, talk to me about the bike life. How is it different than maybe what you've experienced anywhere else? What's unique about it? It's tough. Uh, coach is going to get get anything and everything out of you. Like, you know, practices are very long, rigorous, you know, a lot of running, a lot of mental toughness. It's going to allow you to question yourself. But at the end of the day, you know, he's just getting prepared, like getting you prepared for, you know, life after high school, life after college. Just getting you prepared, you know, as a young black man coming into this, you know, world. He just gets you prepared, like, through any and everything. So anytime adversity hits us, you know, we always know how to respond very well. Yeah, I love that. And you are preparing to go to the next level, committed to Mizzou. So shout out to the SEC. I went to Florida. Yeah. But just, like, how how did that come about? Why was Mizzou the school for you? A lot of people don't know, though. So there's associate head coach, Coach C.Y. We are actually from the same neighborhood. And he actually has been recruiting me since my eighth grade freshman year. Yeah, he was the first one to offer me when he was at Florida State. So, you know, we just kept uh, that relationship going. Even when he took the Missouri job, we kept it going. And I feel like relationships to me are a big thing. You know, by him recruiting me so young, he was able to see the other side of me that, you know, not all the other coaches seen recruiting me, started recruiting me my sophomore or junior year. So I feel like relationships and what they have going on is the right fit for me. Yeah, that's awesome. And what do you feel like you're going to bring to Mizzou? You see what they have now, you've been following them. What do you think you're going to bring to the table? I'm, I think I'm going to just bring to the table, like, someone that's going to go out and play hard, someone that's, you know, always going to be part of winning, does anything on the court, honestly. And I'm, I'm ready to get up there. I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah. How do you feel about going out to college? I know you went out to Compass, so it's like you had a feel of being away from home, but you have any nerves, excitement? What you feeling? I feel like, you know, all the nerves and excitement kind of went away when I went to AZ Compass. Mm -hmm. The way I think about it, I feel like this is just a part two. So, you know, all the mistakes I made, all the, you know, mental mistakes, mental errors I made being away from home. I just feel like God has given me another chance, you know, do it all over again to learn from those mistakes, honestly. I love that. We love growth. Yeah. We love growth. <laughs> okay, shout out to that. Okay, let's take a step back. Let's go to high school. We went to Mizzou real quick, but like, let's yeah. walk to high school. Walk me through it. How was it? Was it a journey of growth where you did you have some things to overcome? Just walk me through every year. You know, for sure, my high school years were I would I wouldn't say it was as easy as I expected, you know, being an eighth grader going into it. But I feel like it's really shaped me to become the person I am now. You know, fresh my freshman, sophomore year, we had a lot of adversity, you know, key players getting hurt, uh, being into the regional finals twice, back to back years and still losing. I feel like that really taught me, like, okay, all right. So you fell once, you fell twice. Now let's go back to the drawing board, see what you could do better. And honestly, I feel like that's what also went into, you know, the decision going to AZ Compass because I feel like I needed a, a, a change, a rebrand of myself. Uh, I needed something, you know, bigger to prepare myself for that goal, which was to win state. 
And yeah, honestly, it's just been, you know, a lot of adversity, but you know, with God and just continue praying, I feel like these four years have been like the best four years of my life. That's awesome. What would you say is the area of your game that has developed most over these four years? I feel like my leadership skills, honestly, uh, most people would think I'd say on the court, but it's really off the court. My leadership skills, you know, being a freshman um, that young, I wasn't real. I was very quiet. Didn't understand why things were happening. You know, just growing over the years, I feel like, you know, that's what really, you know, God has made me to be a leader. And I feel like he put me in those uh, situations and get, giving me adversity to overcome so I can be, you know, the leader I was this season. Yeah. And what would you say is an area of your game that you still want to grow in? Uh, on the court, since I give off court, I give on the court. I'll probably say just my shooting, just, you know, getting getting it more consistent, you know, at the next level, because, you know, playing in NBA is something I do want to do. And it's something I that I see is achievable. And, you know, looking now with players with my physique and my body type, I feel like they all need to be able to shoot. So, you know, going into college, that's one of the main thing I'm going to work on, you know, just consistently getting my jump shot right. Yeah, I love that. Okay, so I know a big goal of yours was winning the championship, which you did. Mm -hmm. Did you have any other goals you wanted to accomplish in high school that you also were able to hit? Uh, I mean, ever since day one, winning the state championship was the main goal. I mean, all of course, all the other personal accolades like McDonald's, Gatorade, but I realized like those was in the cards for me and I was able to accept that. So, I mean, I let all that go. I feel like winning the state championship was the biggest thing I could ever accomplish in playing in high school. Yeah, no one can take that away from you. I was watching this podcast and it was talking about how like when people break different records, somebody can come years later and break it. But when you got that chip, nobody can take it. Like yeah. that's that's etched in stone. So shout out to you for getting that. And it's a team accomplishment too. So I like for that. Sure, that was the sure. priority for you over everything else. For sure. Okay. So as you prepare to go to college, what is something that you're thinking about you want to major in? I always wanted to become a sports analyst. So I wanted to go into journalism. So yes. that's a big thing to me. Come on. <laughs> welcome, welcome. I, would, uh, I always act, like, you know, when I was younger, I used to see Shaq and Kenny on uh, NBA T and TNT yeah. inside the NBA. And I was like, you know, I could actually do that. Talk about basketball, and, you know, just talk about other things in life as well. So I always I wanted to be a journalism. Yeah. Please come. To, actually, Mizzou has a great journalism school. Like I know uh, so many great journalists that have come through there. So you're in really, really good hands. Yeah, I've been hearing that. I've been hearing that. So I'm excited. It's legit. Like they have their own news station and everything. So like you're gonna be good there. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So let's kind of kind of shift from on the court and just kind of talk about you growing up. Like, what was it like growing up for you? Talk to me about family and what that means to you. You know, uh my mom had me when she was young. She was 19, so she was a kid still, you know, trying to raise a kid as well. But I, I mean, when she was in and out, going to school, still getting, a, you know, going to work, I was just mostly with my grandmother. She was the one mostly here with me. Uh, I actually lived with her until I was about 12. Mm -hmm. Then I moved with my mom uh, in Miami Gardens. So, but me and my grandma have a, have a close relationship. We're real close. Also my mom too, but yeah. I'll say any, any anybody knows me, they say my grandmother raised me, honestly. Yeah. Do you have any siblings? I do. I have a little sister. Okay. How is it being a big brother? Uh, sometimes it's tough. Sometimes it's easy. I mean, she doesn't make it uh, easy for me. <laughs> uh, always asking me and telling me to do things. Um, but yeah, I mean, I love her. I mean, she, every time I come home, every time I'm having a bad day, I can always come to her. You know, mm -hmm. even though she's five, she's about to turn six, she doesn't really comprehend, you know, as a 19 year old me. But I mean, it's always good to have conversations with her, see how her day's been, see what she learned in school, always helping her with her homework. So that's real good. I love that. Yeah. I'm sure she's going to miss you, even though she make it hard on you. She's going to miss you when you're gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So who was the first person to introduce you to the game of basketball? Um, I'll probably say my mom, really. You know, as a, when I was younger, she... I was always bigger than everyone, so she always put me in sports. I played football early, and she just always wanted me to keep, keep me, like, productive. So when football season was over, it put me in basketball. And basketball season was over, she put me right back in football. So I feel like she she's the one that put the basketball in my hands. I mean, so, yeah, she, she did that for me. Okay, so you mentioned football, too. Which one was your first love? I got to know. I'll probably say football. 
because that's the first thing she put me in. That's what I just got accustomed to over the years. But, you know, when I got older, I'd probably say 12 years old, I kind of made the transition to, you know, strictly focus on basketball and then just to work out and get better at it. Why was it? Did you feel like you were better at basketball? Yes. I, I'm not going to lie. Like, everybody was getting, like, bigger wise. I was just getting taller. So it was gotcha. it was no place for me on the field. I was just too tall. Yeah. What position were you playing in football? Uh, defensive end and tight end. Oh, wow. I just knew you were going to say receiver. No. Nah. <laughs> okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah, everybody was growing, growing yeah. up. And you were growing this way. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. What are some of your favorite things to do outside of basketball? Uh, most people say I'm boring, but besides <laughs> basketball, I probably just, you know, play the game. I like playing 2K, okay. Madden, uh, listening to music. I also like clothes, too. I also like to shop. I like fashion. But, you know, besides that, it's strictly basketball with me. Okay, let's talk fashion. Describe your signature look to me. Is it, like, sporty? Is it, like, <laughs> business? Like, what 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 you doing on, like, your your NFL, your NBA draft day? Uh... I mean, or oh, Jav Day, you know, it's more business look, but I'm always put my own like flavor of my own swag to it. But uh, you know, occasionally I'm more I'm more on some casual look. I like sweats, different like type sweats. I like wearing sweats. I like to be comfy unless I'm going out with my friends or something, then I'll put on some like, you know, some good clothes. Some good clothes. Yeah, okay. some good clothes. Cargos, <laughs> jeans, nice tea, some Jordans, Nikes, you know, all in that realm. Okay, I was gonna say, what what's your signature shoe? Like, the, your favorite shoe in your closet? Favorite shoe? I'll probably say Jordan Force. Mm, yeah, they hurt, my feet. they hurt my pinky toe. The way they curve, I can't. Uh, but I'm happy you can do it. But I can't <laughs> do it. <laughs> yeah, you could. It's just like the versatility behind those shoes. Like you could th put them on with jeans, cargo shorts. It just all depends what type of look you are going with to for that day. Yeah. Okay, what's your favorite shoes to hoop in? Probably Kyrie. Since Kyrie and Nike has like discontinued, uh, I've been wearing like KDs, Kobe's, but Kyrie's is my all-time favorite shoe. Like, okay. I feel like they're too comfortable. Like, I still have some Kyrie's now. I hold on to. I don't really hoop in them a lot just because they're hard to find now. Yeah. So I kind of save them. So when I go to Mizzou, I'll start wearing them more. Hopefully, yeah. they still got some more in the back or something. Yeah, I hope so too. They probably like a million dollars, but I'm yeah, sure they, they a lot. <laughs> okay, cool. Describe your personality to me in three words. Three words uh, on or off the court? Off the court. Off the court. Yep, uh, just regular, I, regular Marcus. Uh, I'll probably say I'm outgoing. Okay. Funny, goofy. I just okay. like to have a good time, honestly. Are you like the class clown person? Like, you just wait. No, nah, not class count, not class. No, <laughs> no? okay. No, nah, I'm, I'm always that person, but it's not. Yeah, no, 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 no. Some sometimes I could be shy, you know, and going into the environment. I don't know. I'm mostly like shy, introverted sometimes. But you know, when I open up, then when you can see the other side of me, the goofy side, the laughing, funny. So yeah. Do coach law have to tell you to be quiet in practice because you playing or you be locked in? No, nah, he didn't have to tell me that this year, but my <laughs> freshman and sophomore year, he told me that a lot. Yeah, because yeah. I don't play. Yeah. I watched some of his practices. He don't play. Not he don't at be all. smiling or nothing. He be locked in. Not at all. I'd yeah, be scared no. to laugh in his practice. <laughs> I, can, I can understand. Okay, cool. Who are some of the people who you would say you look up to in the NBA who have helped kind of shape your game from a distance? Um, I'll probably say Kawhi Leonard. Nice. Um, Scotty Barnes. Um, and Herb Jones from the Pelicans. Okay. And I say all those three players because, you know, their main emphasis on being in the NBA is just, you know, based on defense and playing hard, honestly. You know, Kawhi coming into the NBA, he wasn't how he is now. Um, he wasn't always the main main scorer, main threat. You know, he just got in by playing defense. Scotty as well, just based off his energy. And, you know, her, you know, ever since he was at Alabama, just going out and play hard. So, you know, that's why that's what I kind of structure my game after. Yeah. I was kind of thinking that too when you said Kawhi off top. I'm like a two way. Who is your favorite NBA team if you have one? Favorite NBA team? Uh, I'll probably say the Lakers because LeBron. LeBron's my all time. Say the Heat. Like this was your nah. opportunity. You just say the Heat. No. 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 Okay. LeBron. I'm a so LeBron like fan. LeBron goes. You with it? Yeah, for sure. For sure. So you were a Heat fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I used okay. to stay up to watch the Heat. 
<laughs> and everything, yeah. What are some of the things that you like to watch in your free time, whether it's TV, streaming, YouTube? Um, I like to watch podcasts a lot. I, I'm not going to lie. Uh, podcasts, I like to understand, you know, different point of views, uh, understand different situations. So, like, um, it's a podcast with uh, Steven, Steven Jackson and Matt Barnes. Okay, yeah. All the smoke. Oh. I, I, yeah, I watched that. I watched the one with um, Kevin Garnett mm -hmm. and Paul Pierce. And I recently just wa I'm watching the one that just aired with LeBron James and J.J. Reddick, Mind the Game. Yeah. So, you know, I just, I like to watch those, understand, you know, different things that happen, understand uh, point of views from, like, NBA players. Because, you know, on there, they drop, like, real gems and give, you know, advice. And so, yeah, I, I like I like to listen to those. Yeah, I agree. I feel like it's a great way to, like, get into the mind of those athletes from a distance and then also just understand, like, how they do things. And I know JJ and LeBron, their podcast is, like, really X and O's. Mm -hmm. So it's just, like, you really get to see breakdowns of the game. And it's like, okay, yeah. I'm gonna be ready when it's my time. So yeah. I love that for you. Okay, got it. So when it comes to just being at New Orleans, what would you say if you had to give yourself a superlative, what would it be? Mr. What? Most likely to what? Uh, <laughs> I'll give myself probably Mr. Athletic or okay. something like that. Yeah. Because like besides basketball at school, I just really be chilling. I just really stay out the way. Um, if I'm well during the basketball season, I was really just, you know, if, if I had a free period or anything, I was just mostly in the gym getting shots up. So. I mean, everybody knows me for that. And so, yeah, probably Mr. Athletic. Okay. No, I think that's good. Go to school, yeah. go to practice, go home. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Literally. Okay. What are some of your goals outside of basketball? Um. Well, of course, being a journalism sports analyst. Um, also want to hopefully one day uh, make an AAU team for, nice. you know, in Miami. Um, also want to start a clothing brand, different clothes, um, and hopefully, you know, go into the sneaker business, get some shoes, okay. but I'll, I'll design my shoes for like people like me. Cause most, most people don't know I wear size, you know, 16, 17, okay. and it's hard to find shoes, especially like, you know, good Jordans without it being like a thousand, a lot of money. So that's what I would like to do. Honestly. That's some great goals yeah. <laughs> that is really really some great goals okay what about on the court like i know you mentioned nba dreams anything else that you want to accomplish before it's all said and done um you know nba honestly is just the main one but it's it's the goals inside the nba like you know rookie of the year defensive player of the year um hoping to just you know help a team make the playoffs make a real playoff push uh become an all-star you know those accolades just being inside the nba all nba um, so yeah, ho and then hopefully, you know, God willing, win in a championship one day, honestly. Yeah, I love that. Okay. What is something that you would want the Mizzou fan base to know about you that they may not already know? Uh, well, for starters, they know I'm excited to come. So I'll just put that out there. But, you know, I'm, I'm really, you know, looking forward to, you know, interacting with the fans. You know, the Mizzou, Mizzou fan base is, you know, a strong fan base. Due to, you know, like only the basketball team being the only like, you know, organized professional team in uh, Columbia. So, you know, I'm just looking forward to interacting with them, uh, letting them know, like, I'm just as human as them. I just play basketball, honestly. Yeah. OK, nice. So I always like to end on this question. Who is someone who has been instrumental in your success who you have not had the chance to tell? Who is the person and what is your message? Um, I'll probably say, I'll probably say my grandmother, because I, I never, you know, despite, despite us being so close, you know, I've been traveling a lot, you know, just the past year I left, left home. And, you know, before I left, I never really got a chance to actually, you know, talk to her and tell her how much I appreciate her and how much like, you know, she's made me to the person I am today. She she really doesn't uh, know too much about basketball, but, you know, she knows a little something. But, you know, all the, you know, life lessons she's gave me translated me to the court, you know, just going out every day, working hard, um, seeing her get up every day, going out, uh, providing for, you know, me and my aunts and my moms, my uncles, you know. So that just, that was very instrumental to me, just seeing her as a role model, you know, just working hard and, you know, dedication as well. Awesome. Well, shout out to grandma. We love to be able to hear it. Cool. Well, thank you, Marcus. This was great. I hope you felt good and comfortable here. That's yes. what I want. So thank you for your time.
Thank you. Thank you for having me.